from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Airbus Military, maker of the A400M, is reporting good progress with the airplane's flight test program. Keith Campbell reports. Since the first prototype A400M military transport and air-to-air -air refueling aircraft made its maiden flight in December 2009, the flight test program has made significant progress. Four aircraft are now flying from two flight test centres, namely Seville in Spain and Toulouse in France. As of the 10th of May, these aeroplanes had logged a total of 1,600 flights amounting to 500 flight test hours. Although a snag developed in one engine on the first prototype early in June, the flight test program has generally been going very well, including preliminary parachutist drops. A400Ms have already flown at both their maximum speed, max 0.72 or 72% of the speed of sound, and their maximum altitude, 12,800 meters. Initial air-to-air -air refueling tests have taken place. These involve dry contact, that is no fuel was passed, with a British Royal Air Force VC-10 tanker aircraft. To date, 55 pilots have flown the A400M, including officers from the British, French, German and Turkish Air Forces. One of them is Royal Air Force Squadron Leader David Catlow. Um, the first impression is it's a real pilot's aeroplane. Oh, it's nice to fly. It's uh, very responsive. Um, it's, it feels as responsive as the C-130 um, and uh, it's, it was great fun. First and foremost, good fun. Uh, first impression is it's impressive and uh, for an aircraft in the experimental phase, it feels remarkably um, Remarkably like the production standard. Well, the A400 is uh, designed to replace the C130, so primarily it will be a tactical transporter. So all of the roles that we, we currently envisage for the C130 will be transferred to A400. So air dispatch of parachutists and loads, uh, tactical operations um, into desert strips or into any sort of natural surface grass, uh, small runways. I don't, don't think it will be new missions necessarily, but the capability of the same mission for a load insertion will be much greater. So we can put bigger vehicles on the back, uh, bigger protected vehicles with much more armour um, and much more uh, capability to protect our troops who will be ultimately dropping um, off the back of the aircraft or jumping out of it potentially. Other news making headlines this week includes a South African campaign to improve road safety. ESCOM commits to 75 billion rand 2012 capex target after falling 25 billion rand short in 2011. And security company C3 Shared Services ensures intelligent security at Marlborough Station. The World Health Organization predicts that in the next few years, unless drastic action is taken, road accidents will increase by 65% to become the fifth leading cause of deaths in the world. We really need to take heed because in the next couple of years, unless we take action, this is the prediction that WHO has, that road traffic crashes will jump to be the fifth leading cause of road traffic deaths around the world, accounting for some 1.9 million deaths annually, currently sitting at 1.3 million deaths. And this is one of the reasons why the UN has called for a decade of action for road safety from the years 2011 and two, until 2020. Our statisticians tell us that even if we just try to keep the level the same or even just go down slightly, that we would be able to save 5 million lives, 50 million injuries and $5 billion. 
ESCOM has reiterated its commitment to meeting its yearly capital expenditure targets after having failed to achieve its budget for the past two financial years and having missed its 2010-11 target by a whopping 25.1 billion rand. We've missed our capital expenditure for the last two years. We are uh, targeting to spend 75 billion rand odd this year. Um, but it's more than the Dupi, Kusile and, and the Capacity Expansion Programme. We spend approximately 10 billion rand per annum in distribution. So one of the, the real uh, problems we experience is in our planning, our project management, our scheduling, and so we, we're doing significant initiatives to improve that. Kusile was a major reason for last year. We only started placing contracts in October but Madupi also fell off, but we're certainly targeting the 75 billion this year. Specialist in the design and implementation of intelligent video and perimeter security solutions, C3 Shared Services, says its advanced video surveillance system has contributed to safety at the Gautrain Marlborough station. They looked at it from two aspects. One was obviously lighting was an issue in a lot of the tunnels because they don't want to have lights in every single tunnel. It costs money to run lights and they want to look at safety of the passengers on the rail, so typically they want to make sure that there's no people on the track, they don't want the train hitting into somebody. And the second aspect they wanted to look at was cable theft. Um, they have had some issues of people stealing cables inside the tunnels and they wanted to prevent that. So by knowing that there was someone entering the tunnel, they could obviously have time to react and respond to prevent damage to cabling and infrastructure. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.